Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Heaven is real, but you're not going there. The Undiscovered Country, next on So What? Hi, I'm Chris Dorman. And I'm Don Wade. Welcome back to So What? We are continuing our series, The Undiscovered Country, our look at heaven. Thus far, we've covered a lot of ground, beloved. The necessity of thinking about heaven to godly living. Why it's so important that that memento mori become the cry of our heart. That one day you will die. And that should be a source of tremendous joy and not fear or anxiety because of the great things that are coming. Well, how can we have that kind of confidence in the great things that are coming if we don't look deeply at what the scriptures reveal about heaven? And that's what we've been doing over these many, many months. What is heaven going to be like? What are we going to what are we going to be like? What are we going to be doing in heaven? Dude, I get so excited about it. I mean, really honestly, in, in, I don't know how long we've been doing this now for quite quite a few months about now. About 10 years, I think. Yeah, it feels I think like we it, started in July like or something. Yeah, it was We're last We're going to be summer, doing this until the new heaven and new earth. Now, but you know, I with every passing study that we do as we prepare for this stuff, I get more and more excited about what we have coming. Yeah. I, I really am giddy about that. Yeah. It, it's pretty cool. And there's no reason not to be, because as what, what we've seen is while we don't have a complete picture of what glory, of what eternal life will be, what we see, though, is pretty doggone good. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you it know, is. it really is. And, and last week, I like what we did, that little hodgepodge of stuff, you know, that mm-hmm. onion gatherum of subjects we just tossed together. Um, but bef- and we're actually nearing the end of this study. I, yeah. think, I think we are. But before we leave, there are a couple of things we wanted to touch on that if you, if you are a thoughtful reader of the scripture... right. There are things you may have read that have made you think, well, you know, they speak with such certainty about heaven. They speak with, they're so confident about what heaven is going to be like and and that we we know we can be there. Right. But there's some verses that I've read that make me, I don't know, they're kind of confusing to me. So first, as Christians, if you are in Christ, you're going to live forever. Okay. Even though you die, you will live. And the quintessential, and there's lots and lots of, of proof texts we could give you, okay? We could right. we could give you many, right? Okay, but I think for the believer, there's just really only one we got to look at, and that's John three sixteen. John three sixteen. I want to read it in the Amplified version because it's really rich, and mm-hmm. I think it really drives it home. Yeah. John three sixteen. For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that He even gave up His only begotten, unique Son, so that. Whoever believes in, trusts, clings to, relies on him, shall not perish, come to destruction, or be lost, but have eternal, everlasting life. Hmm. That's awesome. It is like the quintessential it verse is. on eternal it life. It is. Right? It is. Like I said, though, and there's down there, there's lots of others. And, and that what, I've, what we're putting here on the screen is not exhaustive, beloved. Right. Okay, the, the, the consistent message... The consistent message for the believer is that if you are in Christ, you will live forever. Mm -hmm. And what we have been looking at for these last several months is what forever looks like, where it will be and what we'll be doing, all those kinds of things. We haven't talked about whether or not we'll actually be experiencing forever because that's kind of a given. Right. But we thought before we close, we wanted wanted to look thoughtfully at, at a couple of things that maybe, just maybe, are causing some of you just a tad bit of anxiety. And at the end of the day, beloved, yeah. the, the purpose for this series is to take away that anxiety, to take mm-hmm. away any fear whatsoever mm-hmm. about death, that we would be sure and that we would be confident. So, so confident. I mean, like gravity confident, right? right. Like gravity. We really believe it to be true. And therefore, we can trust and right. not worry. 
to have that childlike faith that yeah. Jesus talks about, right? Yeah. That we don't have any question in our mind that our Father has good intent and yeah. that He's going to deliver those good things Amen. to us that He promised. Amen. But there are some passages, though, if you've looked at them, you, mm -hmm. you may have been kind of scratching your head. Yeah. We want to look at a couple of those today. Sure. First one is in, am I going first or you? You. I'll go first, okay. Is in Romans chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. Uh, this is my little note there, if you can see my scroll. Romans 2, <laughs> 6 and 7. Love it. Um, am I in chapter 2? Yes, I am. Okay, here we go. Okay. Romans 2, 6 and 7. God will give to each person according to what he has done. To those who by persistence in doing good seek seek glory, honor, and mortality, he will give eternal life. But for those who are self-seeking and who reject the truth and follow evil, there will be wrath and anger. Okay? So God will give to each person according to what he has done. Okay? Right? Then we have Paul in uh, the letter to the first Corinthians in chapter 4. To the first Corinthians? To the first Corinthians, yeah, yeah, to the first Corinthians, in first Corinthians, one Corinthians, chapter four, verse five, therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts, then each one's praise will come from God. Hmm. Wow. What do you take from that? What's that saying? Well, I mean, well, I mean, he's being very plain here, therefore, you know, he says, uh, God, the Lord, he's going to come and bring lo light to the hidden things in darkness uh, of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts. He's gonna, he, all those things are going to be laid bare. Yeah. Everything. In, uh, Romans 14, verses 10 to 12. That way I don't have to put it down here. Romans 14. <laughs> Actually, you know, I could just leave it right here, couldn't I? <laughs> you could. Romans 14, 10 to 12. You then, why do you judge your brother? Now, Paul is speaking to believers here. There's no question of the context here. He's talking to Christians. No. You then, why do you judge your brother? Or why do you look down on your brother? For we will all stand before God's judgment seat. It is written, as surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me, every tongue will confess to God. So then, each of us will give an account of himself to God. Give an account. What? What? Okay. For what what you done? got? Okay, second, two Corinthians. Two. Second Corinthians. This is the second group of Corinthians. <laughs> so first Corinthians is to the first group of Corinthians. This is to the second group it of Corinthians. It couldn't possibly be the second letter to the, them, right? It was probably the second church of Corinth. <laughs> there you, oh, oh, not unlike the first Baptist the church. First, exactly. okay, all right, is there a second Baptist church? <laughs> Jeez, everything's first, isn't it? Right. Well, the first shall be last, just yeah. saying. There you go. Okay. Um, so we look in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. Paul oh, says, yeah. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. So, beloved, if, if you're a thoughtful Bible reader, and, if, if, and if, the, if it really matters to you, then these should make you think. They should. Because there's no question that the, the Christian life, if it's just for this life, Paul says, we're to be yeah. pitied. And you really should feel sorry for us because we spend our entire earthly life denying the flesh in anticipation of forever. But if, if heaven really is a myth, if, or, or if heaven is there, but you ain't going, right? Like there's people in Matthew 7, there's a heaven, sure, but you're not going. Well, then why would we live this way? Now, Paul says that believers, you're going to face judgment Everything you've said, everything you've done, everything you've thought about is going to be laid bare. It's going to be exposed yep. before God. Here it is. Here's your life. Here it is. And you have to answer for it. Well, then how can I be assured of eternal life? I thought Paul said in Romans 8 that there's no condemnation for mm. me. I thought Bingo. that all my sins have been propitiated, that God isn't pissed at me anymore. I, I thought that those promises were real. They are. Well, then what the heck is going on? How can I be guiltless? How can I be perfect spiritually right. and yet still be subject to judgment? That doesn't make sense, does it? So while we, we're not going to talk this week on what that actually means, I can tell you this. What it doesn't mean, it does, doesn't mean that somehow at the end of the day, God's going to take back what he's already given. That's right. That we can, that judgment that is being referred to, that we can have great confidence when we go into that judgment. And how do I know that too? Because John tells us in his first epistle as well, in chapter 4, 
verse uh, 17 and 18. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. So love casts out that fear of judgment. And he says here we can have boldness in the day of judgment. Right. We don't have to be afraid of it. We don't have to be afraid of it. And yet Paul says, and he's warning Christians that right. this is what you're going to face. Okay, so what does it mean? So let me, let me put it to you like this. When we think of judgment, especially when you're thinking about the sheep and the goats, you're thinking about a judgment of, of guilt and innocence. Okay? Right. And and and, it, and I work in the legal field, and I think of I think of judgment in that way. Mm -hmm. You're pronounced guilty. You yep. are your innocence is is declared. Whatever. And and when we're looking at the end times, and we see the guilty are judged, the right white throne judgment, and and all kinds of terrible, horrifically bad things for all eternity will take place. So when we think judgment, that's what immediately comes to mind. But beloved, when in these passages, yeah. unless the Bible contradicts itself which it cannot, but, but unless you're prepared to accept that the Bible contradicts itself, then there must be another kind of judgment taking place. Let me put it to you like this. My, there's not a lot on TV that I actually enjoy anymore, but one thing I, I do kind of like are cooking shows. I do. My wife likes them. We'll, after a busy day, we'll sit down and we'll watch cooking competition. Okay. Mm -hmm. And there, there are judges there. And when someone wins the competition, what are those people called? They're called judges. Okay. Now they don't have weapons, so when someone loses, they don't consign someone to, de to death and damnation. They're not judged and found guilty and condemned to hell for all eternity. It's like, so I'm sorry you didn't win. We're declaring the winner here. You get the prize. You get the blessing. Here is what you get. You've, you've won the prize. You get to go on to the next round. You get a check for 10 grand, whatever. That's a form of judgment. What they've done right. is going to be looked at, inspected, and rewarded. And beloved, that's the kind of judgment that is taking place in those passages out of Romans and 1st and 2nd Corinthians. It's that kind of judgment. How do we know that? Because we know that all of our sins have been paid for. Yes. We know that there is no condemnation. We know that, that we are promised eternal Amen. life. And therefore, we know that there's nothing hanging over us. Uh-oh, he's going to change his mind. Uh-oh, could Matthew 7 be talking about me? Not if you are in Christ. No. Nope. Not if you are in a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. No, he knows you. He's got you in his hands. He's never going to let you go. And nothing can separate you from that great, great love. That's okay? Awesome, so that's the kind of judgment we believe that, 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 that Paul is referring to. Yeah. A judgment of, of, of our works. A judgment of what you've done with what he's given you. What have you done with what he's given you? Well, that might raise some other question. That might cause some other questions to come to your <laughs> exactly, mind, right? Exactly, 100%. Why the heck would that be necessary? And that's, a, that's an interesting question. And there's not unanimity on, on, as to what exactly it means. And that we'll talk about next week. Got anything else? That's it. That's it. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in, my friends. And God willing, I'll talk to you next week. See you soon.